This is Hannibal here from thehannibaltv.com. And we heard talk, I don't know if it was about a year or so ago, that WWE was going to produce a documentary on Ted Hart, who has three interviews on this channel, as well as a match against me as the Blood Hunter. He actually had the first match that the Blood Hunter ever had. Um, but I was thinking when I heard about this WWE documentary on him on peacock that it was going to be kind of uh, telling the negative and the positive story of him he was the youngest wrestler ever signed by wwe he i understand why his career didn't work out but he had a crazy amount of uh, talent still does great great at promos and amazing in the ring but the this documentary seems to definitely be a, a true crime style documentary. Definitely, almost like like a hit piece on him, um, talking about something that I know nothing about. Uh, I guess a real a documentary team that was following him for a reality show when he was dating some girl named Samantha Fiddler. That I guess disappeared i knew ted he actually brought me into the business in 2001 for matt rats when he was doing that with eric bischoff and when i left calgary to go to puerto rico to wrestle around 2005 i lost contact with ted until i did uh did an interview with him that i was in 2019 in January 2019, so I, I I didn't see him for a large period of time. Then I wrestled him in July of 2019, and only recently uh, had some contact with him to help set up a couple podcasts with him on this channel um, through Jack Kilby, who has the Great North Wrestling podcast on this channel, and interviewed twice Ted uh, Ted twice in October, but. Um, it's funny that they portray him in this as definitely a big pot smoker. I can say in 2019, the time that I saw him in Philadelphia for several days, I didn't see him smoke any pot because I believe he was on parole. And even when he was in Canada, I don't believe he was on parole at that time. He seemed to have been finished with pot. When I was younger, he was definitely a, a pothead. As far as uh, his self-professed claims that he was a, a drug dealer, I actually never, I actually never saw him do any job other than wrestling. Even the cat breeding, I've I've seen him with c different cats at uh, at various points in time, which I assume he must sell because we've seen several different cats, and then uh, I don't think he has one now. Um, because he's been moving around a lot. But I, in any of the times I know, knew him, I've only known him to have wrestling as a job. And I have seen him uh, pick up a lot of girls. The girls definitely love him, and he has a lot of charisma. Um, but he never had really a, a girlfriend during the the period i knew him other than one girl that he dated for about three months and nothing came of it and then when i knew him in 2019 i think he was still with that uh maria manic when when i believe the relationship was still going good at that time so again this this piece on a good note uh ted has fallen off the radar a bit in the last since 2019 ish or so his, la his last run was uh, with MLW when they were more relevant before AEW really came on. And M MLW seems to have pretty much, um, it's almost obsolete now from where like, it's rarely talked about. I think they only run events every three or so months. Um, but yeah, at least he'll get some publicity out of this. It seems to be a hit piece on him. Looks like it's going to stir up a lot of controversy, but at the same time, it's showing a lot of his wrestling moves. 
And I, again, I haven't done any research on this uh, missing person's case. I only know the, the rumor and innuendo and never really looked into it because uh, you only hear about the rumor. So I guess this, this documentary is going to show more of that. One thing I will agree with that I saw in this documentary was the producer of the documentary says he started when he started following Ted, I guess he was looking at creating the next reality show. And I remember back when I first knew Ted around 2001 and the Matt rats and stampede wrestling days, I always told him that his life would, would have made a great reality show because um, I was just watching a podcast of Mario Mancini, who I'm interviewing uh, at 2 PM today in just a couple minutes, former WWE enhancement talent, saying the guy that he knew that was the most like his in-ring character outside the ring was the macho man as there was pretty much no difference to me ted is also like that ted uh, is constantly cutting promo constantly cutting a promo he dresses outlandishly i remember going to uh, grocery stores with him and him like doing backflips in grocery stores in his outfit like with his shirt unbuttoned just to like attract attention randomly. And yeah, I have seen him. If anyone looked at him the wrong way, especially in his younger days, uh, he would definitely challenge them. But one, the most famous that I saw was when some guy was on uh, rollerblades standing on, on top of uh, uh, a doorway on, on top of some stairs and the stairs were like a, a triangle with a little a little uh ledge where the the door came out and you could go down either way on the stairs and and he was actually with some girls that night ted and i were going um to hang out with some girls and the guy that was leaving to go rollerblading made fun of his outfit and he walked up and pushed the guy <laughs> who was uh, was on rollerblades. So the guy just went flying down the stairs. But the interesting thing about that was the guy said he was going to call the cops on Ted. And and, and he, he did call the cops on Ted. And Ted got in absolutely no trouble for that at all. Um, and another time I was actually with Ted when he apprehended a guy that the cops were chasing. Um, we were just driving down the street and he noticed that the cops were chasing somebody and he told me to follow this guy and we got out and we chased this guy for like maybe seven minutes down alleys up and down over bare, like garbage cans were being knocked over. We were jumping over fences and stuff. And I didn't even realize he was chasing this guy for the police, but he ended up taking this guy down and the guy had a switchblade on him and something like $2,000 and, and the police came and ended up thanking him. And he ended up getting some type of uh, commendation uh, from the police. So there's definitely good and bad to Ted. As I said, I don't know anything about the, uh, the other stuff, but uh, you guys can watch it. And uh, the Ace Montana stuff. For the Ace Montana stuff, I, I only know what I saw of the video. And from what I understand, that whole situation has been dealt with. And that's why I removed it. Um, because it was dealt with and whatever happened, happened and... Ted is now, uh, from what I understand, from his last uh, shoot interview, I believe he might still be on parole, but I think uh, whatever his last situation was, he's at, he's at the end of it. And yeah, as I said, I, I'll definitely watch the documentary, but it didn't seem to be the neutral WWE documentary that I expected. It's more of like, focusing on the controversies of him in outside the ring rather than the inside the ring stuff. So it seems to be more of a, a serious documentary than I expected, but 
You guys can look up the trailer and uh, critique it for yourself. Let me know what you think of the trailer in the comments. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe